when things like this happen, we shouldn't take them in isolation. And as you often hear me say, they are symptoms of a rot that has been creeping in over a very long period of time. Um, but also, um, it is also about the uncertainty in Nigeria about nobody knows how you can get anything done in Nigeria. If you ask the average Nigerian, how can you get a job? How do you get admission into a university? Nobody can tell you. So the cumulative impact of all this, of an uncaring attitude of government towards the welfare of citizens, which in basic political science 101, I mean, they tell you a government's legitimacy is measured by where it places the human being. We're not talking here about the electorate. So if you don't create an architecture that protects human beings and set high premium on a quality of life that from birth to death, any citizen living in this country is entitled to as a right, then what you're going to have is, you know, the kind of thing that happens simply because you've, you've just declared vacancies. Vacancies that many people will tell you have already, most, of, you know, most of them have already been given out. So uh, this is just a symptom of the disaster that can become national unless government moves very drastically you know, to deal with the situation. Are you worried and are you scared? I'm not scared, but I'm worried. You know, one about, but there are two levels of worry. And perhaps the government is a list of my worry in the priority scale. It is the lack of moral, sense of moral revulsion about what we can say no to. Um, in one week, you, you lose 300 lives in just one week. And um, nothing happens. Um, we've been following, see the amount of time that has been given to the missing plane. Um, uh, these things happen, the long term impact of all this for us mentally and ethically is that we're going to end up with a society that has become almost immune, you know, like the late Daniel Giver will say, that we have become unshockable. And I think that doesn't all go well for a, a society that is as complex as Nigeria is. Because what, that, what then happens is that you send out a signal to government that we can do anything and get away with it, nothing is going to happen. So I think that the first level of worry is that Nigerians ought to develop a sense of revulsion about what minimum standards are acceptable from those who govern us. Once you do that, the people who govern you will get the signal, you know, that you cannot tolerate X, Y, Z. The second point then flowing directly from that is that, you know, the obsession now is with elections. But we have to have a country before we can have an election. We have to have citizens who will go out to vote. Um, so I'm hopeful that this will just not be something that the government will react to by the decision it makes. Usually what Nigerians do is they call for the sack of X, Y, Z. But it is not the sack, it is the container. Whoever enters within that system will still do basically the same things. So for me, when we get these kind of tragedies, we should flip the coin and perhaps hopefully, for the sake of those who died, do much more. It's not enough to say, you know, any family that lost a loved one is entitled to a job or two. That's not the issue. It is what all of us as citizens of Nigeria are entitled to. That, for me, should be the crucial question.